Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph. In today's video, I'm taking you guys back to one of my images I shot a long time ago, somewhere in 2020. And I also shot this on the 5D Mark IV with a Sigma 24 to 70 art lens. If I go into the metadata, you'd see right here that this was shot in November 2020. And the lens is the 24 to 70 2.8 Sigma and the body is the 5D Mark IV. Nowadays, I'm getting questions on the camera profiles that I shoot with uh, because people think that that is what really enhances the colors in my image, but it's a little bit more than that. You have to understand color theory, so I'm gonna walk you through color theory a little bit using this image and also using a different software from Adobe. And I'm also gonna be talking about certain other things that you need to consider uh, when you want to shoot. So this is a little bit more on the pre-production side and have a vision of what you want to create and then work with the elements to help you create whatever image it is that you're imagining. I also do have an older video on the channel where I spoke about camera profiles and how they do not necessarily affect your raw files, especially if you're going to go through a raw processing software before opening them in Photoshop. If you're shooting in RAW and JPEG, then that is where you need to be a little bit more sensitive with the camera profile that you're shooting with, as that is going to be baked into the JPEG files, and then it's going to be a lot harder for you to change the profiles, right? So if you look at Fuji and Sony, for example, if you are using Adobe Lightroom or even Camera Raw, you can go ahead and choose your camera profiles even in post. So this goes to show that if you're shooting in RAW, you still have some flexibility in choosing camera profiles. And if you're shooting with Canon, um, even Adobe has their own profiles that you can still select in post. But because I use Capture One, I use a different system. So for example, if this is my image and I want to quickly start post-processing, the first thing I will do, I have already set this as a standard, is that I will switch my image from generic to pro standard. If you look at the generic, you can see it's a little bit more washed out. Her skin is a little bit more yellow and pale. But if I go to Pro Standard, you can see it's looking pink. It's a little bit reddish. And this is the skin tone that I remember her to have. This looks a lot healthier. This just looks a little bit muddy and it doesn't really favor her. So I'm going to click Pro Standard in this case. But before we jump into the post-processing bit, I want to take you guys behind the scenes to show you a little bit on the lighting, right? So if you look at how I was shooting this, I shot this completely with natural light. There were no reflectors, no bounce cards, nothing. Just me, my camera, my lens, and then the model. But if you look at where the lighting is coming from, you'd see, obviously, it's coming in from this direction. Because if you look at my body, you can see that this part of me is in highlights, and then this part of me is in shadow. And the same thing translates to the model as well. This part of hair is in shadow, and then this part of hair is all being lit up. Same thing with the rocks. This part is being lit up, and then we have some shadow play going on all around here. And this is creating a very dynamic and interesting looking image, especially for the video itself. But if we move on back onto the photo, you see that it was looking different because of where I was shooting from. But before we do that, let me just play a little bit of the video for you guys to see, and then we'll jump on back onto the screen. In terms of lighting and in terms of where I was shooting from, this is what I was seeing, right? So we had the lights coming in from somewhere about here, and then we had this beautiful illumination on our subject, right? If I zoom in a little bit more, you see that the shadow, even though it's defined, it is not very harsh. And that is because even though we had the direct sunlight on hair, we had this beautiful light sky serving as a diffuser. And also we had some reflections from the rocks and from the water itself bouncing back to lift up the shadows. And that is why the shadows are not really, really dark. And if you look into her eye, this is where you'd even see that. So we have this being the source of light from the sun. You see that there is a bit of a separation in the light. So if you look over here, we have the top part 
and we have the bottom part and this is something that you would typically see if you're doing a studio shoot where you have your softbox on top or whatever light source it is and then you put a reflector underneath to lift up the shadows so that is what is happening in the natural setting and this is also something that you can sometimes really pay attention to in your surroundings just to make sure that you're optimizing where you are and getting the best that you can from the lighting that you're presented with one other thing that i also want to draw your attention to is the way we positioned her and where her head is facing so if you have this beautiful harsh light which is creating this kind of shadow underneath your subject if you have your subject look down then there is a high chance that you're going to get those raccoon eyes where the eye sockets are casting shadows themselves the nose is going to cast a shadow down onto the top of the mouth and then the lips are also going to be casting some shadows down and that is not typically really flattering but asking her to lift her chin up and turn it towards where the light is coming from just gave us this beautiful lighting on her face and we can see that we have a very beautiful definition of her jawline as well because we have this broad light right here and then it quickly goes into a bit of a shadow and then we have that contrast creating this beautiful structure on her face and the same thing is happening in the rest of the image and so you have this beautiful light and then you have the shadow showing her tone you know the definition here between this light and then you know the shadow and the light all of these little things are creating you know pockets of interest all around the image and so lighting is the number one thing that you have to pay attention to if you're trying to create images that are you know compelling and that look really beautiful as you can see because this is a raw file the colors are washed out everything in the image is desaturated and so it doesn't look as flattering as i was seeing you know way back in 2020 when i was capturing this image and so we're going to go there but before we do that i want to show you how you can process your raw file to maximize the data that you captured and then to enhance the look and feel of the image so we're going to go back into capture one and this time we're going to start making our adjustments now if you've been following this channel for a while you know the first thing that i always do when i open capture one is take out the sharpening because for me the sharpening that capture one does is not flattering at all i always want to have control over my sharpening you know and i can choose where i want the sharpening to happen as i can be selective with it or i can do an overall sharpening but you know i just take it out inside capture one all right now remember that i said that the camera profile isn't set right so because i'm shooting raw i can even go into you know like a canon and choose i don't know canon ra and then click on pro standard and it was it's gonna switch it a little bit towards that profile if i go back into canon if i go back into um, the profiles i can go into um, effects and you know i can still change these profiles i can go with whatever i want i can go to other i can go to you know some presets i've also made um, there are so many things that you can go i can even choose a different camera model so mamiya for example i can choose all these profiles and you can see that it is affecting the image and that is because with a raw file you can always change your camera profile right okay so now that you understand this now we need to treat this image and you know bring all the you know bring all the information back into the image so the first thing i will do is tackle my white balance right what i'm going to do is click on the eyedropper because i know that these you know splashes of water or these petty waves are pure white and so if i click on that it should shift my white balance and it should give me a little bit of a neutralized tone so now that we have this set I think I just want to cool this down a little bit more. Okay, I think this looks a little better to me. Now this is a lot cooler. It's desaturated as well. Still, we haven't pulled all of the information yet. Now I'm going to go into levels and I'm going to increase the contrast ratio in the image a lot. So I'm going to bring the shadows in and by doing that, I am bringing some definition back into the image. So bringing it somewhere here, I think it looks good. So I'm going to park it around here. Okay. Now that just brings a little bit of contrast back into the image. I'm going to go into exposure. Let me close these tabs. And I'm going to increase my contrast just a little bit. And I'm also going to increase the saturation quite a bit. Now you're seeing that we are beginning to see all of the colors begin to shine and it's not looking flattering at the moment. We're still going to go in there and then make some 
more adjustments now i'm going to go into high dynamic range and because this is a raw file i can pull my highlights back or i can open up my shadows i can play with the contrast of lighting till it looks flattering so i'm going to reduce the highlights and bring that down to a point where i think looks good and i'm also going to bring my shadows down because i still want to increase the contrast in the image and i think somewhere around here looks great all right so let's just do it before and after to see where we started from so this is where we started from it was washed out you couldn't even tell that the colors were rich but now we're beginning to see that the colors are popping i think after this i'll just go straight into my color editor and then start playing with some of the individual colors that are present in the image so let me just half this so you guys see and then we'll do a swipe through to do it before and after now i want to tackle his skin i remember even when i changed the profile i was saying that it looked very um yellow and dull and then i added some pinks to it now over here I can still add some depth and definition in the colors of her skin so I'm gonna start off with the orange and what I want to do is just reduce the lightness on her skin somewhere like this I think she'll look good I'm also going to increase the saturation of that color quite a bit I think somewhere like this should be okay and I'm gonna shift it from yellows more into the red zone so this is just going to enhance the richness of her skin tone right so before after before after and you would not even imagine that you can pull this much information back into your image all right i'm going to go into the yellows as well and i'm just going to shift again that towards a warm tone something like that increase saturation a tiny bit and also darken that down slightly now the next thing i want to tackle is going to be the cyans and the blues so i want to move the cyan colors a little bit more towards blue just like that and i'm just going to desaturate it because i don't want it to compete with her skin tone i want her to shine as much as possible right now inside the blues what i'm going to do is also just move that a little bit more towards cyan so that those two colors just meet up at a point and i'm also going to desaturate that quite a bit again i don't know what competition with her skin i just want her skin to look really good i'm also going to darken the lightness down just a little bit like that and now we've been able to pull the information back into the image so this is before and this is after this is the raw file and this is everything that we have been able to bring back into the image and this is what i remember the image looking like but now we're going to go a little bit further and talk about color theory so i've opened this image in photoshop but before we talk about the colors in here and why it works so well and why this image looks so good i just want you to understand how color theory works so that next time when you're doing your shoot you can pay attention to those and try to figure out if you know there are some complementary colors or even if there's a color scheme going on you know um you know if it's going to work if it's going to be flattering or not you can tell right so adobe has an app called adobe color and if you just go onto your website and type color.adobe.com it's going to open this page up for you now the good thing about this page is you can see the complementary colors you can see a wide range of colors and figure out if it's working or not and you can also create profiles but i'm going to do another video on this app separately but before you plan your shoots and you have an idea of the location and you have an idea of the clothes or even the backdrop that you want to choose you can quickly just come in here and figure out if these are colors that are going to work well so when you open adobe color there are different color harmonies that you can cycle through we have analogous colors we have monochromatic colors and monochromatic is even something that i typically like to do so this is where you're probably staying in the same hue by using different shades of that color that's something i also like to do a lot so if it's a pink tone i can play with different shades of that same tone um, in my image but usually what i'm doing is i'm playing with analogous colors so colors that are sitting really close to each other in the color wheel so i can play with like warm oranges all the way into purples but also just be selective about how dominant each color is so maybe i can go heavy on the warm tones and then just have hints of purple in there if i go into triads you'd see that these are the colors that will complement each other and you can always dial these around to figure out what's going to work for you but in the image that we're working with i think that it sits in like a square color harmony so if you look back at the image right now let's pause and look at this for example you can see that there are pinks in the image in her dress there are some greens in there from the background we have the blue sky and then we have this brown rock 
right? And then we also have her skin tone in them. Now, if you go back in here, I think that if I, yeah, we have the greens in here. We have the warm tone, which probably her skin tone was sitting in. And then we have this pinkish tone. If I just drag this down a little bit, I think this is more uh, of the color range that we're playing with. So let's go back into the image and see if we can just draw blobs of colors in there to see what we're working with, right? So I'm gonna create a hard brush and sample the skin. And I'm just gonna paint over like so. Sample the pink and then also paint over like that. Sample this part of the dress, paint. Sample the rock, paint. Um, the greens, I can paint as well. And then I can sample the blues and then paint. So if I just create a blank layer underneath and fill it with white or black, right? These are the colors that are present in the image, right? So if you go back, there are blues, there are blues over here. We do have this pinkish tone and her skin tone. So we have the pinkish tone and her skin tone in there. Um, it can, you know, skew a little bit more towards red. It's still fine, it's quite close. Um, then we have the blues in the sky. We have the greens of the trees in there. And then we have some other auxiliary colors, but at least you've been able to identify that. These are colors that will still work well in your image if you have them. You can also just do a simple complementary color scheme where you pick your main color and then you look at the opposite color of the color wheel. And this is something that people like to do a lot in movies. And so if they are shooting with a warm tone, you know, that's where the teal and orange thing came from. So if I go more into the orange, you see that you can balance or complement that warm tone, that warm orange with teal. If you decide to go a little bit more on the red tone, you can go and cool it down or balance it out with some greens. And you have all of these things that you can play with. You also can go into shades of colors, right? And just play around and see, you know, what you can really do with colors, you know, of the same shade, right? You can also go into compound colors and just figure out what it will look like if you're playing with all of these. So before you actually go out and shoot, you can play with this app and figure out the kind of colors that are going to be present in your image and see if it's going to work or not. And that is what this video is about. I wanted you guys to take some time off, study colors, figure out what color schemes you even like a lot or if you're gonna be you know, shooting in a location, do a recce, go there before, survey the area, look at the dominant colors in there. And then when you're styling your model, you know the kind of colors to go with that will complement your image. And also when you're color grading, also consider some of these things so that you know what color to, you know, shift your shadows towards, your mid-tones, your highlights, and then just play with that. These will always come together to help you create very beautiful looking images. This is where we started from, right? It was raw washed out colors were not looking flattering but we took our time just to make sure that it looks good maybe we can even just add a little bit more on exposure so we are not looking too dark yeah and something like this to me looks a lot better and now i can go into photoshop do my post processing and save this and give it to the client so again before after before after I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did leave a comment down below leave a like it goes a long way to support the channel also share it with someone that you think will benefit from this and i'll see you guys in the next video